Hey, before this video begins, you might be wondering, what the hell is this sugarcoat thing about? And that's what I'm here to tell you. The 2021 Sugarcoat is a new series I'm starting for the end of the year where my friends and I discuss our overall thoughts and opinions on some new media that came out this year, as well as some older media we decided to experience for the first time. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, plus it really helps the channel out a bunch. Thanks again, and on to the video. I don't think I had ever been more invested in a show before I watched Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion. This story with supernatural abilities, epic mech fights, enthralling international conflict, complex and riveting characters, an emotional and bombastic soundtrack, and one of the most compelling protagonists of all time, all in this phenomenal show. If you haven't seen this show, you should absolutely consider watching it whether you're into anime or not. Now before we continue, the rest of this video does contain spoilers for Kogios rounds 1 and 2, and in my firm opinion, this is one of those shows where you do not want to get spoiled on anything. Going in blind only enhances the viewing experience of Code Geass. You've been warned. This year, my friends and I decided to watch Code Geass after we finished Full Metal Alchemist. Link to that video in the description below. Today, I've brought my boys back so we can discuss our thoughts and opinions on our viewing experience. We'll begin by discussing some of our personal favorite characters in the show. If the answer is not Jeremiah, then you're wrong. Sorry to disappoint you, Sam. <laughs> no, you listen to here. You listen here, you motherfucker. <laughs> you just, you cannot beat him. Okay, but does he eat pizza? I didn't think so. He <laughs> eats oranges and then some. He eats oranges, everybody. But does he have green and hair? He's getting his vitamins in, fucking nerd. I, I went onto the code kiosk, um, wiki, and they give the zodiac sign. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah's a Leo. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Are you a Leo? I don't know what that means, but yes. Sam's happy. My favorite character is Jeremiah Gut Gutwald. Gutwald, I believe. Gutwald. Gutwald. He's First off, I think it's him or Mal, but Mal quickly got phased out. Um, I can actually go on why I like both, but Jeremiah, I just like him because he's just a fucking... He's a champ, you know what I mean? I like him from the very start, because he's kind of like the egotist. It's weird. Anyways, I love his abilities. His abilities are fucking great. Um, they were, yes, EMP is easily one of the most interesting things the show has done. He's just cool, you know what I mean? He's just a cool character. I really like that every time you think he's dead or gone, he just comes back. And I, I just love that about him. I also really like Mao just because it's... I like him from a writing perspective more than I like him from a character perspective, contrary to Jeremiah. Mao is exactly what Lelouch could and debatably does become at some point. He is just an insane version of Lelouch, someone that's completely lost it. And it's an easy, like, quick, like, parallel. He also has some of the most entertaining lines, and his ability is very thought-provoking. Uh, they're actually sisters. It's the uh, Princess Cornelia and Princess Euphemia. Uh, Princess oh, Cornelia is a Capricorn, a blood type O. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're well written. Do, bro. Well, it has to be Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> one of the key members of the Washington Rebellion. <laughs> but instead, he defected to the Britannians. Kid you not, this is an actual wiki page. What? <laughs> Pedigree, right? When they managed to persuade him no with way. the title of nobility when he is about to appeal to King Louis. You're fucking with me. For assistance, he's then given the title of Earl by the Britannians. Because of it, the Continental Army suffered a decisive defeat during the siege of Yorktown, in which George Washington was killed. Oh my it God! It's a thing. CC knew Benjamin Franklin personally. Franklin's betrayal is pivotal in the continued existence of the Britannian Empire. Yeah, my that would never happen. Characters would probably have to be Jeremiah. Thank and you, Cornelia. Okay, that's actually yeah. really fair. What do you uh, like about them? Both? Their loyalty. Loyalty to the end. My favorite character is Cece. Like, all jokes aside, there's just something about her that I truly do like about her character, and I don't know how to put it into words. The mystery uh, aspect? Or is it, like, just, like, the build-up? Well, like, the, the whole thing about, like, her... 
like having the ability to be loved by everyone and then her herself just couldn't feel any feelings Bef but like before she made the contract like her her gios power was to be loved and it basically just turned into everyone loving her but she couldn't feel anything else and then lelouch was like that 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 spark but like that's all the serious stuff Funny girl, funny, girl eat funny girl, eat pizza. pizza. Funny girl, eat pizza. Funny hot girl. She's pizza. She's got a giant plushie that's called Mr. Cheese. And she looks good in any outfit. That's true. Now allow me to explain why Lelouch is my favorite character of all time. He's the most compelling character I've ever followed in a story. While there are other characters such as Suzaku, Cece, and Colin that are interesting, Lelouch is the reason I kept coming back to watch the show. I was so eager to see what the next step in his plan was. And speaking of which, sometimes things don't go as planned, and Lelouch fucks up hard. But he knows as a man of many masks that he must maintain his composure. He's a flawed character. What is he willing to do in order to get what he wants? Who will he be manipulating with his Gios next? Will he stick to his ideals and beliefs? Is he going to give up being Zero? Will he be exposed as Zero? These are all questions that I thought to myself during my first viewing of Code Geass. There's a lot more I could unpack about Lelouch, but that's my overall view on him. Lelouch is what single-handedly puts this show above some others in my eyes. He's one of the greatest anime protagonists ever, and my favorite character of all time. There's a lot of intense moments in Code Geass that put us on the edge of our seats. Why don't we see what the boys and I thought were some of the most impactful, surprising moments in the show. Or like one of those like, oh shit moments. Yeah, basically. Um, There's a lot for me personally. What's There's her fucking lot. name? Shirley? What? Shirley. Yeah, Shirley. Shirley's death. That was like a, like a big, oh shit. Shirley's death hit me like a, mm. Shirley's mind weight hit me like a fucking freight train. Shirley is such a tragic character. And like Rolo's death, as much as I disliked Rolo, as much as we all hated him, I still felt bad for him when he died. Okay, the table seat actually is like intriguing though. The table seat did shock me. Okay, is that just because you watched the video and now you have a new perspective on yeah. it? Yeah, that's, that's legitimately it. It's interesting because it shows just a lot about our character. It shows us that A, first off, she's a lesbian. Horny. B, well, not only that. But like let's 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 go with what we know about Britannian society. First off, it is remarkably racist. British. So I'm willing to bet homophobia is on that list, and a lot of people I think they have confirmed that they're remarkably homophobic. So she's basically throughout the entirety of the show, there's a lot of scenes where she's just struggling with her inner conflict. But like puts it in a new perspective and makes her slightly more redeemed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because she is a victim of circumstance in that situation. I guess when the flail was first introduced, because they were like, they were hyping it up, it's like, oh, it's just a, it's a nuke. And then, like, you actually, like, see the devastation it causes. I suppose it does. Um, but probably the way, like, the way they handled warfare. I, I guess the best example would be Lelouch versus the pretty blonde guy. Oh, shit, His yeah. His brother. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Schneisel. <laughs> they're not playing war, they're playing chess. Which is, they've been doing that the entire time. It's just a lot more like, they're, they're reading each other's movements on the fly, but with actual people. Yeah. I love and that scene that they too. Don't, they, they both care and don't care for the lives of the men on the battlefield. They only care about certain ones. Yeah. They they will like, it shows how desperate well. Lelouch gets at some points. I love that scene so much where it's like the final battle and then they're, you know, sending out troops, oh. pulling back troops based off which everyone's doing, yeah. and then they go back to the same starting spot. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was talking about. I mm -hmm. thought that was that was both really funny and also kind of scary. Lelouch is so compelling. Every decision he makes, all the big decisions, I am just so invested in. I just want to know what his next step is. So, like, this scene, uh, when he wipes Shirley's memory, that's a big one, I know. Seeing your guys' reaction to that one as well was pretty interesting, but, you know, he's, he's driven <laughs> by his goal. To totally forget about, you know, 
all that horrible shit that Shirley went through. Some people who like Kogias, or at least people who watch Kogias that don't like the Yuffie thing, where, oh. you know, he accidentally uses his Gios. I've seen arguments that, like, they're basically stuck at that point, because Lelouch is like, I agree, now we can make good Japan section. And it's like, well, where do we go from here? What? I guess the show's over, right? And then it's like, nope, Lelouch does a mistake. And then even more bad things happen. It doesn't bother me that much. Well, and also, oh, too, fun. afterwards, when they were talking about it, he never really owned up to it and said, oh, yeah, it was an accident. He always made sure to let everyone know, yeah, this was all part of a plan. Yeah. And, like, that's just one of the really good things about his character is that even though he has a lot of flaws, he still somehow makes it work. Yeah, like, e even though he knows sometimes, like, I really fucked up there. When everyone else is like, what the fuck is going on, Zero? And he's just like, oh, this is gonna hurt. It was all part of the plan. And hey, if that didn't happen, then what the fuck would the happen? Ending. Exactly. You wouldn't have yeah, the rest of the show. It, it was just like kind of weird the way it happened. I would still be fine if it was the same outcome. But if the lead up to said outcome was kind of different. That's a, a I, that's a very fair point. Probably one of my favorite scenes in just any show ever is the is the ending of the first season round one. Oh yeah. That basically sold me on the show. I love everything about it. I love the whole him finding out it's Lelouch and the helmet splitting open. It's so dramatic, but it's so fucking good. And the helmet falling on the ground and you hear it rattling and it's just so cool. There's nothing, but you can just hear the helmet rattling on the ground and it's so dead and just, oh my God, the, the atmosphere and the, ah, it's so good. The ending of round one is amazing and I love it so much. I think that is, all I'll say about that stuff. Shane, any impactful moments you wish to share? Yuffie. <laughs> <laughs> Yuffie's death. Yuffie. I mean, hey, Yuffie's death. That one hurt also. me the most out of all of them. Really? Shirley's definitely hit me the most. I think more than I'll call Shirley. Shirley. Well, because just like <laughs> the, the amount of evil she did, which is the complete opposite of her character, it was just awful. What are your thoughts and opinions on the the mechas so, as opposed to other mechs, Gundam, Evangelion? People called this a mecha, and you guys you guys were talking about like the first anime that you watched. The first one that I watched was Gundam Wing, but I <laughs> so I didn't really like the design, or not the design. I didn't really like the way they handled them in the first part, and I there were still elements that I didn't like in the second part. But they did it a lot better. The like the rivalry between the two um, scientists felt like they were just pulling stuff out of nowhere. Like, oh well, Suzaku has this now. Oh well, I can't believe they developed that so fast. Well, good thing we already developed a countermeasure to that. Ha ha. And I, they they did that several times. Yes, they did. Uh, which I I wasn't really the biggest fan of. They definitely stepped it up and like both the design and abilities one thing i did and didn't like about the nightmares was how they could turn on and off their iff and go on and off radar i didn't like it because that's not how radar works but i also liked it because they could go stealth mode but i feel like they also could have developed a stealth nightmare i still i still wouldn't call it a mecha though mm -hmm. i wouldn't either what? i would not call it a mecha i feel like Be Calling that, it a that, mecha is something else. It sets the wrong expectations. Exactly. It, the story, Although I feel like that's yeah. also a good thing because then when you watch it, unless you're like a hardcore mecha fan, but then like when you watch it, you're just completely blown away and surprised by what the story does. Chekhov's gun. Why do I remember uh, I knew it was coming up. <laughs> Chekhov's gun. That was it. Oh my god. I got Sam, it. Out. Sam loves to br pull out the Chekhov's gun card. Oh, I'm right. Well, you brought it up too. It's the idea that you don't show something without it having a meaning, having a meaning later, or at least having an importance. 
And um, his whole heart issue or his lung breathing issue uh, of the one Chinese guy, Shinzuko? Uh, no, yeah, Shin, Shin, yeah, Shin, oh, yeah, Shin yeah. Kei. Shin Kei. Why bother showing us if it wasn't, you know what I mean? I feel like it was kind of just like a battlefield limiter. Like, because he was a skilled fighter and it, it was, they couldn't really figure out any other way to slow him down. Yeah, it, it didn't oh. even slow him down that much at some times. That's true, because well, he there are scenes where he just fights through it. You can't have a Code Geass video without talking about that ending. I think it's my favorite ending, probably in in endings. What do you remember about your reaction? to the ending. Depression. Fucking stellar. It made sense, because it. I feel like that that's the only place the story could have gone. Or like, it's the only way yeah. the story could have ended, or else it just would have, like, dragged on longer and longer. I mean, he, he was in too but, deep, let's be real. Oh, absolutely. Even though I figured he was going to die, I was not expecting it to happen that way. It, it was one of the few times where it was like, the, the show actually surprised me, and I was shocked oh, yeah. sitting there. It floored me the first time I watched it. and He, it, he was and, on the floor. And it was it was just as amazing watching it the second time. It is incredible. I don't really know what else I could say that hasn't already been said, other than CeCe's still alive. <laughs> that's all that matters. And that's all oh, that matters. It's so it's true. True. One, of the, one of the people that gets away with a happy ending. Kind of sad her boyfriend died, but... You say a happy... Oh, okay. It's a satisfying ending. Yeah, satisfying ending. There we go. It's a fulfilling, satisfying ending that you knew was coming, but it's also, like, something that still you, you still don't want it to happen, and you feel bad for all parties involved because it got that far. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He's a fucking homie. He took a bullet for the entire he fucking took, world. Uh, he more of a sword. sword. Yeah. <laughs> the the whole fucking world. And that wraps it up for this episode of The Sugar Coat. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This was a lot of fun to make. Thank you to everyone watching. Thank you to my boys for coming out and talking about the show. This show is so good. It's one of my absolute favorites, so it was a pleasure to talk about it and watch it with these guys. I will leave you all with my final overarching statement on my opinions about Code Geass. I understand why people love it or hate it. There, there are a lot of things to love, but there are just a lot of messy things as well that can be torn to shreds but it, at the end of the day i see this as a story about lelouch the parts about lelouch and his journey to achieve his goal and all the great and terrible things he does is what is the most intriguing and compelling part about the entire show so you watch the show for Lelouch, and in my opinion, it's fucking worth it. There are other things to definitely love and appreciate on the way, and there's definitely problems in both round one and round two. But it's all about Lelouch. You watch the show for Lelouch, and it's fucking amazing. I completely agree. I don't think I can add anything to that. Suzaku. You're going to be a hero now. The messiah who saved the world from Emperor Lelouch v. Britannia. The enemy of the world. A zero.